Hi everyone, this is Daryl and welcome back to Book Odyssey. Today I'm going to be setting out some need to know stuff from Robert Jordan's epic high fantasy series The Wheel of Time to prepare you for Amazon's TV adaptation which airs later this year or for anyone just looking to start the series. The wheel of time turns and ages come and pass. What was, what will be and what is may yet fall under the shadow. As the Wheel of Time series is set to air on Amazon Prime Video on the 19th of November this year, and as I'm currently reading the series, loving each book more than the last, I thought it might be helpful for what newbies to set out some basics. So I brought along a friend who is a big fan of fantasy and who has a few questions about this beloved book series. So, what is the Wheel of Time series and why should I give a shit? Great question, Bookbot. Let's take a look. The Wheel of Time is a best-selling series of epic fantasy novels written by the American author Robert Jordan. Originally planned as a six-book series, it now consists of 14 published novels. The series also includes a standalone prequel novel and a companion book. The author began writing the first volume, The Eye of the World, in 1984, and it was published in 1990. The eleventh volume was published in 2005. Jordan sadly passed away in September 2007 while working on the final volume, A Memory of Light. Fellow fantasy writer Brandon Sanderson was to complete the final volume for publication in late 2009, however due to the size it was decided that Jordan's A Memory of Light would be divided into three separate novels. The series is noted for its length, its well-developed magic system, the extremely large number of subplots, the intricate detail of its imaginary world, and the vast number of characters, which apparently total 1800 named characters in the series. As of August 2019, the series sold 90 million copies worldwide. Okay, so what's it about? Pathetic human emotions. <laughs> oh, book bot. The Wheel of Time is a high-stakes story about good versus evil, with a heavy splash of heroes' journey stages and archetypes. The premise of the series goes something like this. At the dawn of time, a deity known as the Creator forged the universe and the Wheel of Time which spins the pattern of the ages using the lives of men and women as its threads. The wheel has seven spokes, each representing an age, and it is rotated by the one power, which flows from the true source. The one power is divided into male and female halves, Sedin and Sadar, which work in opposition and in unison to drive the wheel. Humans who can use its power are known as channelers, and the principal organisation of such channelers is called the Aes Sedai, or servants of all in the old tongue. The creator imprisoned its antithesis, the Dark One, at the moment of creation, sealing him away from the wheel. However, the Dark One breached its prison, allowing its influence to seep back into the world. It rallied the powerful and corrupt to its cause, and these servants began an effort to free the Dark One fully from its prison, so it might remake the world in its own image. In response to the threat, the wheel spun out the dragon, a channeler of immense power, to be a champion for the light. Sounds like a load of human guff to me, so what do I need to know before I start? Another good question, Bookbot. We could take a look at some terminology and a few concepts from the first few books, if you'd like that. Whatever. Great. The One Power is a major concept in the series. It emanates from the true source, which is energy capable of manipulating the universe. It is made up of complementary parts, Sedin, the male half, and Sadar, the female half. Not everyone has the ability to channel or access the One Power. Most have none at all, and some only have the ability to be taught, to one degree or another. But a few channelers are born with the spark, an innate inclination that will lead them to touch the source, whether they wish to or not. Aes Sedai are women who can channel the One Power, and have been trained in the White Tower of Tarvalin. Aes Sedai are the only organisation of female channelers in the Westlands, giving them a vast amount of power and influence over the nations of the world providing as advisors to kings and queens. 
Each Aes Sedai belongs to one of the seven Ajahs, with the exception of the leader, the Amalin Seat, who is all of the Ajahs and none. The Ajahs is the name given to the seven different groups of Aes Sedai, the blue, green, yellow, red, white, grey and brown. Each Ajah has its own specific purpose and rules, and is governed by its own internal leader. Most people trust neither the intention nor the word of an Aes Sedai, and many outrightly hate or fear them. Tavaran are the people around whom the Wheel of Time specifically weaves the pattern with all surrounding life threads. The pattern is basically the interconnectedness of all things. No one is born Tavaran, the pattern turns them to be one when there is a need, and they are only Tavaran until the purpose is fulfilled. A Tavaran is a central focal point for a web of destiny in the pattern. These people are spun out and used by the wheel to correct itself when the weave begins to drift from the intended pattern. The Dark One is the primordial, sentient, cosmic force of evil in the universe. The Dark One's goals is to break the spirits and hearts of whatever sentient being he can influence, and if freed from his prison, eventually to remake creation in his own image. His true name is Shayatan, although many people believe that speaking that name will bring misfortune to the speaker, which is why he is referred to as the Dark One. The Dragon is the title for the Champion of Light against the Dark One, and is always the reincarnation of a single particular soul. He is reborn in the Age of Legends and again in the Third Age, to combat the Shadow. The prophecies of the dragon give vague impressions on the events that will follow after his coming. Wisdom is a term used in the Two Rivers region of Andor to describe a village healer and leader of the local women's circle. The position of the wisdom is one of great responsibility and authority. Wisdoms are generally considered the equal to a village mayor, and in some places his superior. Unlike mayors, wisdoms are generally chosen for life, and it is exceptionally rare for a wisdom to be removed from her office before her death. A warder is a person, traditionally male, who is bonded by an Aes Sedai through the use of Sedar to become her bodyguard and protector. Warders are generally recognised by their distinctive colour-shifting cloak made of fan cloth. The warder bond has distinct benefits for both parties. The warder gains greater stamina and physical prowess, a greater capacity to resist evil, the ability to sense shadow spawn at a distance and greater resistance to injury. The Aes Sedai, for her part, gains a bodyguard, confidant and ally in schemes who is intrinsically linked to her and can be compelled, to a certain extent, through the bond. Both parties are able to sense the other's general location, physical well-being and, to some extent, emotional state. Shadow spawn is a collective term for creatures of the Dark One. Trollocs and Midral are just two of these, but feature heavily in the first few books. Trollocs are creatures that have the body of a man and the head and feet of an animal, such as a bear, bird, wolf or goat. Trollocs are quite large, generally around 8 feet tall, and kill for the sheer pleasure of killing. Midral, also known by many other names, including Fades, Lurks, the Eyeless, Halfman and more, are man-sized and pasty white with no eyes, yet they see like eagles in the night and day. Their powers stem from the Dark One, such as the ability to travel instantly to any place where shadow meets the light. Ogier are a race of non-human creatures who have an intense love of knowledge and peace. They are great architects and stonemasons responsible for many most impressive structures and cities of the world. Ogier's stonework is known for its organic nature, often appearing to have been grown like plants. So BookBot, is there anything else you want to know? Which meat monkeys make up the main characters? Another good question! You are on fire BookBot! Well, like I said earlier, there are a number of significant characters in the Wheel of Time, but right at the beginning of the story we can condense the main characters down to these five. Rand, Perrin, Matt, Nynaeve and Egwene each hailing from the sleepy village of Emmonsfield in the Two Rivers region of Andor, their lives are uprooted when the Aes Sedai Moraine and her warder Lan ride into the village. We see them torn from everything they know as they discover that the Wheel of Time has many things in store for them. Where are the robots? Sorry, Bookbot, there aren't any robots in the Wheel of Time. None at all. Not even a toaster. Well, I'm only on book four, I might be wrong. Robots may well feature later in the series. In fact, they probably do. 
Okay, so thanks, Bookbot. You've been... Well, anyway. So that's the end of this video. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button to support the channel and subscribe if you haven't already for more videos from me. We talk about all things books, mostly sci-fi with a bit of fantasy too. So until next time guys, happy reading.